Hello everyone. This is a clip that I've wanted to do a video on for a while. Um, it is from the nest area, April 20th of last year, 541 in the morning. It is lightly raining and you'll see some distant vocals happening in here. But this last vocalization is of extreme interest. And when I first heard it, it I had to take a double take. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this for you. This clip, I've just taken, um, I've filtered the, done the low and high filter on it. So I filtered out um, the sound from 175 and below. And then I've filtered out the sound from 4,000 hertz and above. But what you see and hear here is what the SM4 recorded. I'm going to say this animal was between 50 and 100 yards. Um, it is close to the ravine, so it, uh, and I don't know what temperature it was outside, so it maybe have been closer or further depending on the atmosphere, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was no more than 100 yards and probably a lot less. Go ahead and play it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the cursor here. I'll play this and one more time. Okay, I'm going to switch screens and hopefully the screen recorder follows. This is the same clip of what I just played for you, the section I played for you, except I've amplified it and it's looped. And I'm going to go ahead and play this. Okay, we're going to switch screens one more time. So, on this screen, I've incorporated a clip from the Sierra Sounds, um, Ron Moorhead's uh, recordings. Um, admittedly, I, for a long time, was on the fence with the Sierra Sounds because I've really heard nothing else like it. I, I've heard people talk about hearing the Sierra sounds. In fact, uh, Rebecca, her very first experience back in West Virginia, she heard Sierra sound like vocals. Um, I've heard that a lot. I've heard from witnesses and I've heard from people I know that have heard the sound, but you don't have a lot of recordings of it. And that's always kind of bothered me. And I know it bothers a lot of people. That being said, though, you know, I've I've met and spent time with Ron and his wife um, many times. And they're good people. Ron is a man of integrity and character, and he is not a uh, person that I believe would hoax anybody or try to hoax anybody. And so I've, you know. It's always bothered me that I've not heard any other recordings. And I think I, at one point I, I told Rebecca 
and Shane and other people, <laughs> I've said, you know, I, I'm not going to get on board with it until I record it myself. And uh, anyways, I can't say that what I recorded is the same as the Sierra Sounds, but I can say there's there's some very interesting characteristics. I'm going to go ahead and play this clip, and then I will point those characteristics out. So I'm going to add, um, I've, I've talked with uh, both David Ellis and Monagahela on occasion about the Sierra Sounds. And uh, Monagahela had some great points um, that I've taken to heart. He pointed out that there are a number of sounds in the recordings that Ron has that we all agree are part of the lexicon of Sasquatch sounds or sounds that we believe are made by Sasquatch. There are whoops and there are knocks in those recordings. And if someone was to bring you whoops and knocks today, uh, a lot of people would accept them right away. The other vocals, uh, the point that, that's really important is are close communications. And Ron and his group, um, Al Berry, they were close to these animals or whatever they recorded multiple times. And those vocalizations were meant for close communication. 90% plus of suspected Sasquatch vocalizations recorded are of communications meant to carry distance. Um, you don't get a lot of really close stuff. Generally speaking, it's at distance and the vocals being made were made to go distant. These vocals were intended for close communication. So in order to have examples of it, you're gonna have to have your quarter close to them when they're communicating to each other. Um, and I'll point out, my experience has been, they don't make a lot of vocals. They don't make a lot of sound uh, in the first place. So the, the odds go down on capturing what uh, Ron and Al Berry captured back in the 70s. Uh, but people, witnesses are saying they've heard them. So that's, that's a point I wanted to make. And finally, the structure, the visual structure of the vocal is something very important to look at. This particular vocal and the vocal I recorded, the, fund the structure of where the fundamental is laying and where the harmonics are laying are very similar. They're almost, they're not identical, but they, when, if you've looked at a lot of sound, it's the same kind of vocalization. It's the same kind of vocal, but it's being made by two different animals. Um, one animal in the Sierras back in the 70s and one animal in 2022 um, in Washington State. We'll go ahead and play it one more time. So I can't say that any of this is Sasquatch, but I find it highly suspicious. And uh, it's one of my favorite recordings now. I'll play it one more time and we'll be out of here. So 
just remember, look at the visual structure of the vocalization. Thanks for watching.